Let's establish a terminology before looking at graphs of function. If you have a graph of a function and you look at a graph from left to right, you travel on the x axis left to right. If the graph is rising, you say function is increasing, falling down, decreasing. So here it's rising means increasing. If it stays flat, that means no two x coordinates have different y coordinates. They all have same y coordinates. You say the function is constant. So mathematically speaking, we say a function is constant on an interval a, b, if and only if for all x1 smaller than x2 in the interval a, b, f of x1 equals f of x2. All that means is that the y coordinates are the same for any two x coordinates in this interval a, b. So in this case, the function that you see here is a constant from x equals 1.7 all the way through x equals 7. So you say function is constant in the interval 1.7 to 7. Notice we're not including the endpoint. Function is said to be strictly decreasing if on an interval a, b for every x1 smaller than x2, the y coordinate at x1 is bigger than y coordinate at x2. So for example, if I take a coordinate here and coordinate here, like x equals 0 compared to x equals 0.5, you can see 0 y coordinate at x equals 0 is higher than y coordinate at x equals 0.5. And that happens for all x values in this region right here. So you say function is decreasing on the interval negative 1 to 1. Similarly, strictly increasing would be that if you take a x coordinate smaller than x1, smaller than x2, then on the interval a, b, for all such points, y coordinate at x1 is smaller than y coordinate at x2. So for example, at x equals negative 2, y coordinate is about 5, and at x coordinate negative 1 and a half, it's about 8. So at negative 2, it's smaller y coordinate than at negative 1.5. So here we'll say a function is increasing in the interval negative infinity to negative 1 because you see the arrow, which means the graph keeps on going forever. It also increases from x equals 1 to x equals 1.7. And so that's why we're writing where the function is increasing in two separate intervals because there are two places where the function is increasing, negative infinity to negative 1, and again from 1 to 1.7. All right, let's take a look at this graph. Some other terminology is sometimes when you're working with polynomial functions, you also have uh, not just polynomial functions, but many other functions you may have a scenario like you see here. You have peaks, and you have valleys or dips. Such points are called local extrema. Intercepts, you already know, all places where the graph hits the x-axis are intercepts. So there's one, two, three, four, five intercepts here. And then you also have a y-intercept is where the graph hits the y-axis. So local maximum or relative maximum is function value that is largest in a neighborhood. So for example, in this neighborhood right here, from negative 3 all the way through negative 1, at a little before negative 2, this point right here is a local maximum. Can you see another one? Very good. It's right there. And minimums would be like right here and right here, the lowest points in the neighborhood. You can see these are not the absolutely lowest points because you have this graph shoots down forever and this shoots up forever, which means that they go to infinity and negative infinity. But in the vicinity, these are the highest and the lowest points that you see. So similarly, local minimum would be the lowest points in the neighborhood, like right there. And intercepts we already saw. So in this case, x equals negative 3, negative 1, 0, 
2 and 4 are x-intercepts, and y-intercept is 0 because that's the only place the graph hits the y-axis. All right, let's take a look at power functions. A power function is function of the type x to power n, where n is natural number. You already know what the functions look like when y equals x, which will be a straight line, x squared parabola, x cubed, you saw the cubic functions. Let's explore what happens when n is bigger than 3. So take a look at x squared graph, which you already know. 0, 0, negative 1, 1 and 1, 1 are points on there. So if you plot x to the power 4, look what happens. That's the red graph you see here. You can see that if I pick 1 half 2 power squared, I'll get a quarter. But 1 half to the 4th power will give you 1 16th, which is lower. But 1 to the 4 power, or square power, or 6 power for that matter, it's all 1. But for example, 2, 2 to the second power, 2 to the second power is 4, but 2 to the fourth power would be 16, which would be off the chart here. So that's why between 0 and 1, the red graph is below the purple graph, which is the x squared graph. Same thing, the black, which is x to the sixth graph, a similar pattern. So as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, the y-coordinate shoots to infinity, between 0 and 1 and 0 and negative 1, the values are lower for x to the 4 than they are for x squared. So let's take a look at x cubed. So you already know that's the shape of x cubed. Let's add higher power, odd power. So we have the purple graph, which is your x to the third power. Red graph is x to the fifth, and black one is x to the seventh. So again, odd power, similar scenario as you saw in x squared, except when x goes to negative infinity, graph shoots down to negative infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, shoots up to positive infinity. But the shape is similar. And you can see again at negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 1, all of these graphs, x to the odd power intersect, just like x to the even power intersected at 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. So in general, then, as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, we say that's the end behavior of a polynomial. And to figure out what the end behavior looks like, you have to look at the entire polynomial's degree. So here we are comparing just x to the 5 power, and here's a polynomial that has more terms. But if you look at x, which goes from 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, or negative 1,000, negative 10,000, negative 100,000, the value of this other polynomial that has more terms, in terms of its magnitude, didn't really change. So x to the 5 is still dictating what is happening to the end behavior of the graph. You can see that if you had a positive coefficient, you have these values. If I put that to a negative, these signs will reverse. So if you have an odd power, left hand, right hand sides point opposite directions. So if the left hand side is down, the right hand side is pointing up. In other words, infinity or negative infinity. If you had a negative number in front here, an odd power, then left hand side will be pointing towards positive infinity, and right hand side will be pointing towards negative infinity. So they are controlled by the degree and the leading coefficient. So n behavior of a polynomial is governed by degree and leading coefficient. Even power, both left hand side and right hand side are pointing in the same direction, both towards positive infinity if the leading coefficient is positive, and both towards negative infinity or down if you have a negative leading coefficient. So let's put that all together. So it might be good to make a chart like this so that you can see how the degree of the polynomial and leading coefficient together contribute towards the end behavior. So remember, odd power similar to x cubed we have left-hand side pointing to the 
negative infinity or falling down, and right hand up and is rising up. If you have a negative leading coefficient in r power, then the left hand side will be rising up and the right hand side will be pointing down. A similar scenario for even, remember like x squared, so positive leading coefficient and even power, both ends are pointing up or both ends rise up. And when the negative leading coefficient and even power, both ends fall down. Let's take a look at this example then. Suppose I want to sketch the graph of this polynomial. How do I start? To do this example then, we will have to use the following. We will figure out what the end behavior is, find x and y intercepts, and then also behavior near the x intercepts. For example, if one of the terms is like x minus 1 squared, that's the even power. Even power of the graph will touch the intercept. So for example, like this way, above the axis or below the axis. Even power means touch. Odd power, on the other hand, means that the graph uh, cross through the x-intercepts. Either from the left it goes up through the intercept, or from the left it falls down through the intercept. So let's see. So we have the function that we want to graph was x minus 1 squared. So at x equals 1, you're going to have either a parabola shape going up or down. At negative 1 intercept, it's cubic. So r power means either from left to right it goes up through the graph, or left to right it falls down through the graph. So we look at end behavior first. x to the second times x to the third gives you x to the fifth. Leading coefficient, that's 1x and 1x. So the leading coefficient is going to be 1. So leading coefficient positive, x to the fifth, which means we're going to have this situation. The graph on the left end falls, and on the right hand side, it rises. And then along with the even power, touch, and odd power cross, we can then put a relatively rough sketch of how the graph might look. So remember how to find x-intercepts, set each factor to 0. Using the 0 property, we get x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. To find y-intercept, replace x to 0. And that will give you y equals 1 as your y-intercept. So let's put all of this information together. And so we have this function that we're trying to graph. We know that the left hand is falling down, right hand is rising up. We already know that x plus 1 cube graph is going to be a cubic shape shifted over to the left 1. x minus 1 squared is a parabola. Now we're going to put these two graphs together. So if you plot them on the simultaneously on the same axis, this blue graph is the x minus 1 squared, and the red graph is x plus 1 cubed. So we want the product of the function. So look at what happens to the product in terms of the sign of the y coordinate. From negative 1 to 0, and 0 to 1, and 1 to 2, whatever number you plug in here, you're going to get something positive times something positive. So it's all positive. But below negative 1, since this is a negative y coordinate, but these are positive, multiplication will be negative. So we have for x between negative 1 and 1, and 1 to infinity, that our y coordinate is positive. But when x is between negative infinity to negative 1, our y coordinate is negative. So let's see how that information then allows us to sketch the graph. We already saw this end is up. So whether you start on left or right, if I start graphing from the right side, polynomial functions have no holes, continuous graph. So I cannot lift my pencil now, and I have to do exactly what I see here because I am falling down, going through 1, and touching it because it's even power, going through 0, 1 because it's y-intercept have to go through the next x-intercept, but then I have to climb back down because it's cubic, and the end behavior means this end has to go down. In terms of y-coordinates, all the coordinates between negative 1 and 1, 
and 1 to infinity have positive y coordinates and below negative 1 have negative y coordinates negative 1 and 1 are x intercepts so pretty much polynomial graphing if you get n behavior intercepts and figure out whether the graph touches the x intercept or crosses you have the shape so if you look at the function we just plotted versus here's my x to the fifth graph i'm just going to have zoomed out pictures so you can see how when x is even uh, not even in the hundreds, thirties, you can see it almost if you were far away, it would look like they're the identical graphs, but really they are very different from each other if you zoomed in. So even if you have a graphing calculator, unless you know what windows to look into, you might be deceived. So first thing is to get the polynomial function in factored form, hopefully linear factors, and then touch the x-intercept or cross the x-intercept depends on whether the factor has even power or odd power. Degree of the polynomial minus one is the maximum number of ups and downs that you will get bumps. So here's the graph. Again, one and negative one are intercept, but this time the leading coefficient is one, degree is four, so both ends are up, and both powers are even, so they touch the x-intercept. So again, I'm going to start in the right-hand side, have to come down, touch it, go back up. Zero gives me a y-coordinate of one, so one is my y-intercept, negative one is x-intercept, again, touch and go back up. Here's another example. Negative 10 will be my leading coefficient. Six is the degree of the polynomial, and so that means both ends are down and negative one, zero, one are my x-intercepts and zero, zero is also my y-intercept. Here the leading coefficient is 10, degree is seven, touch at x equals one, touch at x equals negative one, cross through x equals zero. So touch at one, cross through zero, and touch at negative one, and because the degree was odd, left hand is shooting downwards, falling down, and right hand is rising up. 